Okay, everybody, so we're going to be having some fun with uh, Bifrost today, and not Bifrost Fluid, but Bifrost Gas, or better known as Bifrost Aero, right? Now, as you know, Bifrost is a fluid simulator. Uh, Bifrost Aero is used to create uh, foam on, uh, let's say, oceans or whatnot, right? So we're going to use that to actually create some smoke. Now, for that, we need to set up a little scene here. So let's do that. So we're going to create a couple of obstacles to go up, around, and through. So we can have some cool effects with our smoke. So for that, we're going to go and create a, uh, let's see, curve tool, CV curve tool. We'll jump to the top. And I'm going to just set up the full scene so you can follow along and you know exactly what's happening, right? Now, I'm going to hold on X. So it will nicely snap to the grid. And uh, let's see, we'll do something like this. We'll flow around and get back to the center like that. And then we're going to go in here and we are going to elevate one section of that. We're going to right click and go to control vertex. Um, let's see, we'll do this one right here and we'll hit W. We'll move that up like so. All right, cool. So we need a couple of objects to play with, right? So what we're gonna do is go up to uh, create. We're gonna go to polygon primitives and we're gonna create a pipe. There we go. We'll hit E to rotate, hold down J and snap that. Hit W, move that forward and move that up. Hit F to frame that. So we need to be close to this guy right here. And yeah, that looks all right. I'm going to control A and we are going to uh, tweak the thickness, let's say 0 0.2 to have a bigger opening. There you go. And then let's see, what we're going to do is we're going to create an object down here. We'll do, uh, let's see, we'll do one right here. We'll hit R to kind of scale that and pull it up a little bit. And then we'll hit control D to duplicate. We'll hit W to move on over here. Make that kind of a wall type deal. Hit W, push it back a little like so. And um, yeah, we can do one more if we want, right? So let's hit, uh, we'll take this guy, we'll hit uh, Control D again, W to move, and what we'll do is we'll hit E to rotate, we'll flip it on its side like so. Hit R, scale that, W to move that up. All right. So that's kind of our uh, parkour, if you will. And then maybe we want a ground plane, okay? So we're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale that up. There you go. Alrighty, let's make that a little bit lower so we can see our curve. Okay, so now we need something to actually generate our, um, our smoke. And what I'll do right now is just hide the floor for a second. So we're gonna hit H to hide that. We're gonna take a uh, sphere and we're going to go in here and I, yeah, that's about right. I'm going to hit R to scale it down, W to move that in. And what we need to do is connect that sphere to that path. So it will follow that path as a motion path, right? So select this guy, shift select this guy, go to animation. We're going to go to constraint. We're going to go to motion path and attach to motion path. Right. And actually jump to the other end for the simple reason that that's where my curve starts. Uh, but that's fine. We'll just flip things around a bit, right? Okay, so we have that. Now, if we hit play right now, this guy is going to take off like a rocket, right? So jump to frame one, hit play, and there you go. Very, very fast, right? It has 120 frames, so that's like three something seconds. And what we want is for this to be nice and slow. So we're going to jump back to frame one. We're going to click on the little running guy in the bottom right corner. And instead of play every frame, we're going to go to 24 frames per second times one. Hit save, hit play again, and you'll see a nice slow path. Now, keep in mind that we will be changing this back in a minute, right? That may sound odd, but trust me. Okay. So now that we have that, right, we're going to hit stop. We're going to jump back. And what we're going to do is we're going to have this guy create some particles. So we're gonna to go to the FX menu. We're gonna go up to Bifrost Fluids and we're gonna click on Arrow. 
Now when we do that, a bounding box is created. Let's give that a sec. It's way over there. That's because we're not in frame one, I think. Let's hit play. Let's see what we get. There you go. And as you can see, our bounding box is not following our sphere. Now the reason for that, and I just said I would, is because we have to change back that setting. So bottom right corner, the little running guy, go from 24 frames per second back to play every frame and hit save. Now that needs to happen because Bifrost Arrow needs to calculate and they need to have every frame to do that. Okay, so we're going to hit uh, play again. And now we will see that the bounding box will actually follow the sphere along. And it's very hard to see for you guys, but the sphere is actually creating particles right now, right? Now I'll fix that in a second so you guys can see it better. You can see that our ball is following that path and it's... Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here. And with that, I can make any of these videos for you guys. So show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged, and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel at no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. Moving perfectly, and the batting box is following along. Okay. So we're going to stop this, we're going to jump back to frame one, and um, I'm going to make sure that I got my bounding box selected, and it is. And what I want to do next is I want to change what we're seeing here. So we're going to go to, uh, let me see, we're going to go here to, okay, we're going to go to the arrow shape one tab. Now, right now, it's set under display to particles. We're going to turn off particles, we're going to turn on voxels. Right, and that will make it look a lot more like smoke. And we're going to leave this set to volumetric. So let's hit play again. Let's see if it helps. And there you go. We're starting to get some smoke. That's exactly what we want, right? And it's following along. Now, we didn't make those obstacles uh, for nothing. We want to collide, right? So I'm going to go back to a display. We're going to go to show all to get my floor back, right? And what I'm going to do is set up some colliders. So I have my box and I'm going to shift select my floor, this cube, this cube, this pipe, and that cube. And I'm going to go up under Evix and under Bifrost Fluids and we're going to set colliders. Now, as we do that, the smoke will collide with everything it encounters. So let's hit play. And I'll try to get in close so you guys can see it okay. Now, we don't have a lot of smoke going on just yet. So um, hopefully you can see it okay. We'll definitely be able to see it when it goes through the ring. Yeah, you can see it colliding with that one right there. But let's get close into the ring here and you'll see it. So you see a puff of smoke going over it, meaning that it's basically cut there, right? So I'm just going to jump back and I'm happy with how that looks, right? So what are we going to do next? Well, the thing is when you create the Bifrost arrow, uh, there's a special material that you can apply to that that will help you to create additional settings, right? So I'm going to select my bounding box. I'm going to right-click and go to Assign New Material. Now, when you do that, under Maya Surface, if you go in there and you type in, or you start to type in Bifrost, you have the option to select Bifrost Arrow Material. And when you click on that, you will get that applied, of course, but you also get this entire menu here. And here you have all sorts of things you can play with. So the emission intensity, for example, let's set that to five, right? Now the density, we have a scale, let's set that to two. 
Uh, you can change the color if you want. You can change all of that stuff. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, what we're gonna do as well is we're gonna go in and we're gonna add a little bit of turbulence, right? So we've got our box selected and what we're gonna do is make sure that we're still under FX and we're gonna go under Bifrost Fluids and we're gonna go to Motion Field. Now with Motion Field selected, you can now go in and under the uh, Bifrost Motion Field Container 1, you have a tab called Motion Field Properties. Now we're gonna turn off Direction, we're gonna turn on Turbulence, right? And then if you go uh, a little bit under that, you can go into turbulence and noise and you can play with the settings. So I want this turbulence to be quite hard. So five uh, frequency, you can play with that a little bit. Let's see the speed maybe. And other than that, I'm gonna leave that alone, right? Okay, so let's hit play and let's see what we got. It is a fairly large scene, so. And what I think I'll do, guys, because the floor is a bit distracting, I'm just gonna get rid of that, right? So you guys can see it better. Let's try that again. All right? You got your smoke interacting with your first object. It's moving, it's uh, interacting with the, uh, the wall and the other pillar, and it's going through the pipe, and you will see it interact there again. And you can see that smoke is cut in half, right? Okay, so that works fine. Now, there are many, many things you can play with. You can go in here, you can change the color, the density, you can change the settings on turbulence. You can do all of that stuff, right? But this is the principle of the matter, how it works. So I uh, challenge you to come up with something really cool and uh, use this method and uh, post it below. I'd love to see it, right? So that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, as always, please let me know in the comment section. I will help you if I can. Hit subscribe if you didn't do so and hit that little ring a bell thing so you'll be notified when I post new videos, right? Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.